Lift up your hands, all ye gates, and be thou lifted up ye everlasting doors. What kind of dream? And the King kind of, of Glory, he shall come oh, in. There is a majestic entry that he wants to make. There is a majestic, majestic entry. The gates of the temple are about to be lifted. A new God, somebody here is desperate. Stay with the Holy Ghost and continue with him. Even when it doesn't make sense. And he will plunge you into the wilderness. Everything, at some point, everything won't work. When you notice you have arrived at that place, you are close to a breakthrough spiritually. Satan, Satan will be allowed to bend your mind and to make you feel that you are worthless. You are useless. When you see that symptom, the light is about to shine. I tell you this as a man that has been in the tunnel for more than two decades. I knew that I had gifting from God that can touch the world. I knew it. I knew that what I had received from God was massive. Are you with me? The hand of God in dealing with me was too heavy. He gave some people liberty to even get some ventilation. But for me, I was working with an oxygen mask. The restriction was unbelievable until I stopped fighting because his hand was too strong. And then I yielded. And when I yielded, I was expecting that, okay, maybe in a short while. The breakthrough I expected lingered. I, I programmed it for seven years, that in seven years, the Lord will cause my face to shine. And instead of my face shining in seven years, the greatest problem of my life came. <laughs> and meanwhile, the, the reason why I pegged it at seven was because the last person that God used mightily in my city, his own, the measurement of his own timing was seven years. I called his son. I interviewed his son, interviewed everybody that knew him. And it was seven years. So I put my heart on seven years. And there was a scripture that I put uh, before my face. And the remnant that I escaped out of Judah shall yet take root downward and bear fruit upward. So in that permutation, I believe that the root taking process will take seven years. And I waited for seven years. It was an encouragement. Anytime I found that scripture, I said, don't worry, I'm coming out. Jesus after seven years, the greatest attack of my life came seven years later. I was expecting a breakthrough. What happened was a breakdown. Was 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 um, betrayal. The people that I spent my I spent part of my life for. They gave me an uppercut. May you, Hallelujah. If God wants to help you, that's what happens. He makes the people that are close to you that you are depending on give you an uppercut. So that you will know that it is not so wise to put your trust in. It was difficult for me to continue after the uppercut. But you know what? I had gone too far. I had gone too far and I would be foolish if I claimed that I did not believe in the process that God had domiciled me. And when I prayed and I sought answers, none came. It was darkness. I don't know if I'm speaking to somebody. You, you sought for answers. But what you saw was darkness. You sought for light. But it was gross darkness that you saw. That means Satan has been allowed to achieve his mind-bending project. To make you trivialize the rituals. That was when I began to follow God without a mathematical formula. I began to follow God without an estimate of how long it would take. I was totally yielded and my understanding was unfruitful. It is not a good place for the flesh to be. But I had no choice. That was where I stayed. Then I discovered that my calculations were wrong. Just like Abraham's calculations were wrong. Abraham taught that, okay, Sorry, yeah, Abraham's calculations were wrong. He said, Lot is there, he's righteous. 
Lot's wife is there. That's how many? Two. Lot has two daughters that were not married. How many is that? Four. Huh? Are we going? Then he had two daughters that were married. So if you count them and count their husbands, how many do you have? Eight. And maybe in all the time that they labored in that land, they got two converts. They say, Lot is better than that. At, at least he must have won to be. His calculations were wrong. Are you still with me? If he knew his calculations were wrong, he would have reframed and refocused his negotiation. My calculations were wrong. And your calculations are also wrong. And that brother that asked, I, I, I'm stagnated. Your calculations are wrong. The reason why you are accessing the situation is because you had an expectation and a time frame. When you deal with the spirit, you must trust the lordship of that spirit enough to set the times. I was wrong. And it took a lot of help from God for me to be able to bounce back and to continue the process again quite humbling. But you know what? The soul of every mortal man needs to be humbled in order for us to be able to understand the excellency of knowledge that is found in Christ Jesus. Looking back now, I discovered that it was seven times two. The timing that was measured from, for me by the elders in the heavenlies was 14 years. I'm not saying I gave my life to Christ 14 years ago. I'm not even saying I became a preacher 14 years ago. There is, there, there is, are you there? I have functioned as an intercessor for 28 years. So uh, what I'm saying is, there is a part from whence I understood all the rituals that will support my destiny. Right? And I began to walk in the light of these rituals. You know, most people don't like preaching when it in involves process. They like prophesying that next week something's going to happen to you. And I came to tell you that the, the, the last time someone preached like that, he, the person was blind. It was Isaac. And he prophesied to the wrong person. He released blessings on the wrong man. <laughs> So our, our level of compliance has gone beyond the, that blindness. Because Jesus does not give false hope. If Jesus tells you next week something will happen, next week something will happen. If nothing happened, it means Jesus did not say it. A crafty man has found a way of helping you psychologically. And I didn't want to be fake. I didn't want to be a liar. I didn't want to be a man that was cajoling people. I wanted to know God in truth and how God works. And I wanted to give my life as a seed so that I can realize these things in truth. Because I've read books. I've read, I've, I've tried stuff. You don't know how many books I've read, man. I found out that the, form, the formulas don't work. I found out that the equations were just things that came out of the figments of human imagination. That all work with God will require that each and every one of us continues. They continued. That's when you realize that it takes a lot of strength for you to stay doing the same things again and again. If God doesn't so into your life the seed of strength you will find out that is you know what to do but you don't have the ability to do it the bible says they continued if you're going to continue you are not going to be lenient on your flesh lenient on how you feel if you know it's a ritual it's superior to your feeling the bible says that they continue when i no longer had the time frame in my expectation, then I began to enjoy the process. Then I began to realize what God was teaching. At that time, he had conquered me. 
God will never strengthen any man that he has not conquered. You come to him with your agenda, with your prayer points, with your list, and with your need to prove to your family members that even though you quarrel with them, you were on the right, and God is going to prove it. He will make you silent in the tunnel, and he will not give you light. Your mind, your understanding will be unfruitful, and Satan will begin to whisper to you, They continue. The same way Jesus was in the grave, that's how you're going to be. There's no voice speaking. The only voice you can hear is darkness. And you're going to be in that state for some time. Until you realize that even darkness has a Lord that you must submit to. Because when light comes, darkness has no choice but to fade away. Just like resurrection, God is going to call your name out of the tomb of that process. When the weight of the process has drowned any tendency of the fall that Satan can exploit, when it has drowned it, your name will be mentioned. And by the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, he will begin to raise you out as one of the saviors that is coming from Zion. I know this process. I've, I've, I've survived some circles. And we're about to start another one again. But the power that is in this process is the ability for men to what? It seems you're afraid of the word now. <coughs> they did what? That's where your tendency to use people dies. Your tendency at selfishness dies. You become a true coach, a true disciple. And your vision and your purpose is to reveal Christ and to point him so much and so frequently that all eyes will look upon him. If you have not gone through that tunnel and you are given a platform like this, you will enslave people because of the tendency of your flesh. You will not be a blessing. Many, many people 10 years down the road will curse you and feel that life would have been better for them if they never met you. So a man that has not gone through the process where he survives and is resurrected by the grace of God can never truly be a blessing to the people of God. If you are still with me, say Amen. Amen. Then you will know the cross and its authority to put to death everything that doesn't work by the principle of the life of God. It's a very slow process. But the best of God's captains, he subjects them to this kind of process so that they can represent his interests. Sometimes your childbearing can be delayed. And even though we pray under the anointing and you can feel the vibration, but you see there is an authority that is beyond that anointing that is responsible for the supposed lack of manifestation. It is God attempting to bring you through a process and he is determined that nothing will change the outlook. You must go through the process because he knows what you are. He knows the tendencies that you have and he's not willing to give you any form of rest now because if you find that rest, he will never be your Lord forever. So it can delay even your breakthrough. And that's why even though we have been preaching breakthrough for the past 25 years, in some quarters it's breakdown that finds expression. And it's not because you are under a spell. It is because God will not permit your release because there is too much of the fall still active in your membrane. Hello, I hope you've been greatly blessed by this sermon. Watch out for our next post and don't forget to subscribe, share and like our videos. Thank you.